Hello dear friends, in today's tutorial we're going to cover a piece in the middle of grade 1 and it's an Andate by Caruli from his opus 241, this is number 3. Originally in C major for the guitar, arranged F major for the ukulele. In this one, for the left hand, you're going to be playing the basic chord shapes that you know with few inversions in there, but for the majority of it, it shouldn't be a problem for your left hand. The trick here really is in your right hand fingerings, since we're going to be using the ring finger quite a lot. Hello friends, my name is Mustafa and this is MK Fingerstyle Academy. This channel is dedicated to fingerstyle content, whether it's tabs and performance videos, or tutorials such as this one to help you on your journey to play the ukulele as a solo instrument and we do that through fingerstyle which should help you feel more enriched, satisfied and get that sense of achievement when you pick up your instrument to play solo compared to strumming and I have nothing against strumming but compared to strumming where you usually have to do it with a group of people because you need a singer or a melody to give context to your strumming. And if you have any questions about this piece or suggestions for future tutorials please write them down in the comment section. I respond to almost each one of them and if you're looking for the tab of this piece to follow along print it put it on your music stand and learn it and spend the week or two it requires to master this piece then you can find that pdf on my patreon all links are in the video description all right so the piece starts with a pickup note on the high c on the high a string and we are using our fourth finger to play that third fret this is something that i teach regularly in my ukulele finger style basics course because playing it with your fourth finger would allow your third second and first to be free to play lower bass notes which you'll see in finger style is extremely important so i highly recommend you start working on your fourth finger even if it's weak it's not going to get stronger if you don't use it and I'm going to be using my ring finger when it comes to playing the note with the right hand. Then I'm going to be playing thumb and middle to play the top part of an F major chord. And I'm going to wait longer because this is a quarter note. And then I'm going to play thumb and index, fourth finger again on that third fret, back to that F major chord. So the first motif, thumb and index, thumb and middle. If you're confused about why I'm using these right hand fingers, I am basically alternating my right hand fingers when I play the melody. And this is something that is extremely important and I cover it many times in the free tutorials here on the YouTube channel or in my course. It is extremely important that you as a beginner, finger style, student or player start alternating your right hand fingers because it creates a smoother sound. In this case, every time we play a note, it is supported by a lower bass note, which means you got to use your thumb as well, which is what makes this piece in the middle of grade one in the sense that you have to not only alternate your right hand fingers, but play thumb at the same time with proper free stroke technique and posture, which again is something that I cover in my ukulele thing style basics course. So check it out if you're interested. So the first bar, ring finger again. Now this is the top part of a G minor chord. Notice how I'm using my third finger now and not my fourth finger. That's because my fourth finger was busy playing the note leading up to bar two. It would be a mistake to use your fourth finger and bring it up because it will cut the high note and it will sound not legato. And you do want to sound legato because it means your notes are connected to each other. And in basic English, it will make you sound good. Index middle. And now we're going to go ring finger. But in bar three, we're not going to play thumb and middle like we did in bar two and bar one. Instead, we're going to use our thumb and index to play the uh, top part of F major chord. And then the lower part of F major chord. And then we go to the G minor first inversion. And then we can finish bar four. Here we have one trick for the left hand finger that we have to watch out for it. When you play the F major with your second and first, it will make it really hard to play that first inversion G minor in legato because your first finger is going to have to skip or cut off the fourth string to get to that third string. So because of that problem, we have to figure out an alternative where we can play the bottom part of the F major and the bottom part of the G minor in a way where we don't have that cut. Now, you could use your third and fourth with your second and first. Now, that is possible, but it's very complicated. It's hard to coordinate and it's not reasonable. Also, if you do it this way, then you miss out on the G note on the second string. So what I figured out is that it is much legato to play your first and third at the lower part of the F major chord 
and then you simply move your third finger up a fret, which will sound legato, and your second finger is ready to play the G minor. And instead of... So that's something to think about. So here you play the F major, one is already there, you put your three, and then you would move it and get that bottom part of G minor chord. And one last thing about this bar, you can leave your first finger on for the entire duration of the bar. It will make it sound more controlled, more legato, better technique. When you go in bar four, your first finger is already there and you're not working as hard. Believe it or not, leaving your first finger on while it requires more brain power, it's actually less hand power. So that works better for your technique. metal, index, metal. Then repeat. Thumb and middle. Here's an important move that you gotta master at your beginner levels. Going from one and two to three and four without doing a jump. You have to get used to leaving your first and second fingers on the fretboard and then using your third and fourth. which is a contemporary composer to Karuli, wrote an entire etude that teaches you just that move. And I have it on my YouTube channel, so make sure to check it out in this video. The point is, this move is so important, there are entire etudes or studies dedicated just to teaching you how to do it. So don't skip on that one. Leave your second and first on, third and fourth, open have those fingers ready because you just played them except now you're adding that open C for color and then F major chord and then the repeat sign that's the pickup again and then you go back to playing it the exact same way but on the second ending you would play then index on the open C you already know how to play that three and four don't forget to follow the right hand fingerings as indicated on the score Here is when we get something different for the first time in this piece. We're getting a G7 chord. So that is P, I, M for the right hand, and I'm using my index and third for frets one and two. And if you're wondering why I'm not using my second finger, well, that's because the G7 chord usually looks like this, where your second finger is on the third string. And even though you're not using it right now, if you use it right here, it's a slightly more stretch here between your index and middle finger nerves that if you're an absolute beginner, you might not have that stretch developed yet. So it's good to use your third finger. Your left hand will be more relaxed, more in square posture as I teach it in my course. This is what you want to look like and that's why I'm using my third finger. Here, the trick is to make sure you're alternating your right hand fingers. So that's P-I-M, I-M, I-M, and then you play I, M on those melodic notes. And now that all my fingers are busy, I only have my fourth finger as an option to play the C chord. Alternating our right hand fingers. Doesn't that sound cool? Bluesy-ish almost. Second, first, fourth finger, then stuff that we've seen before. first repetition you play the open C but on the second repetition now we're gonna go into the minor section that's D minor because that's the relative key of F major here I'm using my first and third for the D minor so that my second finger is free to play the A major chord and I'm using my ring finger for the open A then thumb and middle Here in bar 20, I don't have to let go of that second fret, I can just hold it towards the end. Then, it's my third finger there, I'm going to use my index to play it. Then my second and fourth are free to play that A7 chord. Really, you're just playing A major, 
A7, and D minor chord, and the minor passage. As I said in the introduction to this tutorial, the trick with this one really is right hand fingering. Then same thing. Third finger, now first finger, thumb and ring. You've seen this before. Three and four. Then you would play the DC Elefinia, which means you play the A section, then the B section, without the repeat, and then the piece is over. And the idea is that you have A, B sections in a major key, C section in a minor dark key, and then you go back to the A and the B section to finish on a major key, because that is the proper way to do things in a classical balanced world. So I, I cannot stress how important it is to use the proper right hand and left hand fingerings to make sure that you're playing in legato. If you want another great one piece to work on so that you're working on two different pieces simultaneously, then I highly recommend you check out this video that I made here. It's another free tutorial, another great one. It sounds awesome, it sounds gorgeous, and all you have to do is add another week to this piece and you get to walk away with two great one pieces. I'll see you there on the other video. Make sure you click on it. Come on, don't leave me disappointed.